so first of all i will perform more basic practicals of stp and then i will go for like uh, uh, stp production right like vpd guard root guard loop guard everything right so let's start uh, from the stp basic practicals and I, I mean i want to show you that what is the uses of uplink fast or like if you are comfortable with that i mean with those practicals then i can move directly for stp production should we go for uplink fast and dev one fast and all these things okay then let me do one thing this is 127 yeah that's fine Switch one. <coughs> Sorry. This is switch two. Switch three. This is switch four. Very well, that switch one would be connected with switch two as well as switch three, and of course, switch four. And also, you know, you understand the physical topology yeah. of these switches as well, right? So, first of all, let me uh, note down the MAC addresses of each switch now. Show what's happening. Because by default, all switches will be having same priority. So, of course, final decision will be based on MAC addresses. Right. Show spanning.
that ranking will come up in between stage 1 and stage 2 right show spanning tree is this switch have been elected as a root place no and one more thing by default here on all cisco switches you will see that pvst will be running pvst plus actually yeah. what is the difference in between stp i mean like and pvst actually mm -hmm. like in stp first of all they launched cst common spanning tree in case of common spanning tree there will be only a single instance of stp for all all villains right like for an example if you are having this kind of diagram something like that right if this is this switch one is root brace it means it will be root brace for all villains now doesn't matter that how many villains are there if you are running if this switch port is in blocking state it means that means that it will be in blocking state for all villains in case of so there was no load balancing actually right so for that purpose Cisco launched this PVST and PVST was not having like uh, I mean it was not supported by dot one q it was supported with isl only so finally they launched which can be configured with dot one q as well with dot one q encapsulation trunk encapsulation protocol right so in this way now i mean you can understand that what is the necessity of having this pvst plus on all switches right because if you are having multiple VLANs, so for some VLANs you will try to configure one switch as a root brace for some other VLANs you will always try to configure some i mean any other switch as a Road brace right for the purpose of load balancing in same manner like for an example if you are having a very small diagram of two switches only let's say this is switch one and this is switch two and if you are having two links available here in between switch one and switch two so let's say this is dp this is dp this is rp and this is in blocking state and it means that it will be in blocking state for all VLANs now but what can you achieve here with using pvst plus that for some village you can configure it as rp for some other village you can configure this port as a rp so that it will also start to perform load balancing along with the redundancy so by default like for an example if you are running cst then you will never get any type of load balancing but if you are running pvst then you can also get you can also achieve load balancing but remember that by default in pvst plus also you will never get load balancing right because by default for all villains you will find that only one switch will be working as a root brace and by default only one port will be root port for all villains so remember that by default pvst plus also do not perform any type of load balancing but if you want to perform uh, load balancing with using pvst plus then of course you will require to do some modification in your existing stp topology right so we can do that actually to achieve load balancing so that is the advantage of having this pvst over cst i hope that you have i mean you know ab about all these things yeah. already so now what can we say here like as uh, you can see here which switch is having which switch is having best mac address on Switch 3 or Switch 4? Of course, Switch 3 is having the best MAC address, right? So it means if you move on Switch 3 now, it must be configured as a root base. Let's check it out. On, for all villains, as you can see that here, if it is having multiple villains, like it is having villain 22, so for villain 22 also, it is working as a root base. Now, because default topology is something like this here, like you are having four switches. This is your default topology, right? This is 21, 22.
This is right. So because this switch three has been elected as a root base, it means this all these interfaces will be DP. And now on switch one nineteen must be configured as a RP twenty must be in blocking. On switch two twenty three must be RP and twenty four must be in blocking state. And switch four twenty one must be RP and twenty two must be in blocking state. Now in between switch one and switch four because the cost to reach root base will be same for DP election, right? Cost will be same. So, I mean, from switch one it can reach switch three. From switch four also it can reach switch three in this way. Like BPDUs can come from there to here, and BPDUs can also go from here to there. So, in both direction, cost is going to be same, right? So here now they will compare their designated bridge ID. So either switch one is having lower bridge ID or switch four. So to check that, of course, switch four. Switch one is not having lower bridge ID, is not it? So it means that according to the MAC address, of course, switch four, I mean this end must be configured as a DP and both of them must be in blocking state. In same manner, you will also elect DP in between switch one and switch two as well, right? So if BPDU is going from switch three to switch two and going towards switch one, and if BPDU is going from switch three to switch one and coming to switch two, the cost is again going to be same, is not it? So because cost will be same, so again designated bridge ID will take place to elect your DP. So to elect your DP, then definitely we can do one thing: we can compare their MAC addresses. So among, I mean, in between switch one and switch two, which switch is having lower MAC address? Of course, switch one. Is not it? So switch ones, I mean, this end must be configured as a DP, and this end must be in blocking state. In same manner, if you compare the MAC addresses of switch two and switch four, then of course switch four is having lower MAC address, so it will be DP, and here. So this should be your result actually, is not it, Umar? So if you move on R1, now you can see that 20, 19 must be RP, 19 must be RP, 20 must be in blocking state, 23 and 24 both of them must be in blocking state, and 9, 21 and 22 must be DP. So let's start it from switch one itself. What can we do? So spine tree VLAN one. Check it out. 19 is RP, 20 is block, 21, 22 are DP, and 23 and 24 are in blocking state same as this diagram fine then after you can also move on stage 2 except 23 all others are in blocking state on stage 2 is not it so if you move on stage 2 say show spanning tree you will see except 23 all are in blocking state see Only 23 is working as a RP. Whereas on switch 4, 21 will be RP, 22 will be yeah. block. Except it, 19, 20, 23, 24 will be DP. So you can move on switch 4 now. And you can say show spanning tree. Check it out. 20. See, 21 is root, 22 is block, all others are DP. And definitely on switch 3, all of them will be. I hope that now you are okay with it right so in this way it can perform election then let's do one thing let's have topology of two switches only now switch one and switch two here is gonna to be like 21 and this is gonna to be 22 right because switch one and switch two are interconnected with using 21 and 22 so I'm gonna disable I'm gonna I'm gonna to shut down all other interfaces here now. so that I can prove all these things which are whichever I taught you in previous class right so on switch one interface range fast ethernet 1 by 0 by 19 to 20 then fast ethernet 1 by 0 by 23 to 24 and shut down that same command will be configured now see is MAC address in time will be configured equal to 15 seconds because your trunk port have gone down so it will generate TCN and if any switch generates TCN or receives a TCN then definitely it will always configure its MAC address in time equal to forward delay timer which is by default 15 seconds so it's panning 15 seconds fine 
so in this way you can see that now it is i mean only switch one and switch two are interconnected right and switch one have been elected as a root base sure. you can see issue is spanning free check it out you will let me do one thing show the status no vlan is like one two Only VLAN one is there, right? So VLAN brief. No VLAN, right? Only VLAN one is there. So right now you can see that switch one is working as a root brief. If I want to configure this switch two as a root brief, then you can say spanning three VLAN one two four zero nine four four all VLANs, right? Either root primary or say priority, and priority can be configured in the increment of four zero nine six only due to PVST, right? Yeah. Due to PVST. Otherwise, like if you are running CST, then there will not be any requirement something like this. Like your priority must be configured in the increment of 4096. Because there will be only one instance of STP. But this time, because your VLANs can be up to 4096, I mean up to from 0 to 4095, right? That is why here you have to say that the decrement must be of 4096 whenever you will go for priority. If you don't follow this rule, then of course. Uh, on a single switch for multiple variant, for multiple variants for multiple instances of STP, your breeze ID can be same. I'll discuss it later on with you, right? Yeah. This is really mandatory. If it is not, if you are not following this rule, it means that for multiple instances of STP, you can have same, you can have common breeze ID. Yeah, because it's a system extended ID, right? Which is the priority. Plus uh, no, 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 no. I will be discussing it. With you. Fine. So this time. Switch so 1 is working as a root brace as you can see here, switch spanning tree. And uh, on switch 2, as you can see, that 21 have been elected as a root port. You see, check it out. Right? This is root port now. And uh, if you configure multiple VLANs here, like VLAN 1, 2, 5. Sorry, VLAN 1, 2, 10. 10. So, how many VLANs will be there now? 10 plus. Show VLAN brace, check it out. 10 VLANs will be there, right? For each VLAN now it will be root bridge, right? As you can see, show VLAN, spanning tree VLAN 1. It will say that I am root bridge for VLAN 10 as well. It will say I am root bridge for VLAN 9 as well. It will say I am root bridge. Show spanning tree VLAN 11. Is there an instance for VLAN 11 by default? No. So STP will never run an instance of STP for that VLAN which do not which do not exist in its own database. Fine. So STP will always run uh, instances of STP only for those VLANs which are available in its own database and one more thing if there is no trunk port if there is trunk port available and if all VLANs are allowed through that trunk port then only STP will run instance for each configured sorry for each available VLAN in its own database right if there is no trunk port let's say that right now we are having 10 VLANs right show VLAN brief We are having 10 VLANs. Are we having any VLAN member in any VLAN? Of course, we are having, but in VLAN 1 only. So, if you do one thing interface, uh, range fast Ethernet 1 by 0 by 21 to 22, and you say switch port mode access. So, I have configured these two interfaces as, a, as an access port now, right? And you will see now show spanning tree. Is, is, is STP running for any other VLAN now except VLAN 1? Is it running for any other VLAN? Now it is, I mean, the instance of STP is running only for VLAN 1. You know why? Because you configured 21 and 22 as an access port. And by default, access VLAN is configured as VLAN 1. So right now, VLAN 1 is having member here on this switch. That is why STP is running one instance of STP for VLAN 1 only, right? It, does, it is not running instance of STP for any other VLAN. You know why? Because there is no run port available now. So interface is strong. And also, there is no port available in any other vlan right so if stp thinks that for this vlan we do not have any port member i mean for this vlan we do not have any vlan member and also this vlan is not allowed on your trunk port it will never run an instance i mean it will never run instance of stp for that specific vlan right so this time you can see interface range fast ethernet uh, 1 by 0 by 21 to 22 and again I will say switch port more dynamic desirable like again you will see that it will become trunk port and again this switch one will start to run instance of STP for each VLAN now because all VLANs are allowed through this trunk port so now show 
spanning tree in uh, VLAN 1 of course you will you will get result of VLAN 1 and of course you must get the result of VLAN 2 as well and VLAN 3 as well and VLAN 4 as well for all VLANs right so, so in this figure a trunk and we do not allow a VLAN right? then again again there would be problem there will be problem again but will it run in instance of spanning tree like for example do show interfaces trunk interface uh, range fast ethernet 1 by 0 by 21 to 22 switch port run allow vlan remove, remove. 6 Actually. now vlan 6 is not allowed for this trunk port now right so interface is strong is it allowed now and are we having any port member any interface inside this vlan 6 so now show spanning tree vlan 6 but it will be having instance of vlan 5 Fine, spanning tree or uh, sorry, switch port trunk allow VLAN all show spanning tree VLAN okay. it's not it. So, in this way, STP works. Second thing, let's move again back on switch to show spanning tree. You know very well that for all VLANs, it's 21 is configured as a RP. As you can see here if I want to get some load balancing like I want that for willing 1 to 5 of course 21 should remain as RP but for willing 6 to 10 its RP should be configured 22 I mean 22 should be configured as a RP for willing 6 to 10 so interface range sorry interface for second at uh, 1 by 0 by 22 yeah the very first thing that you can modify this selection you can manipulate this selection by modifying its cost and remember that if you are if you are going to manipulate your rp election based on cost cost must be changed at the end of receiving yes. i mean at at known dp end if you change the cost of dp it will never affect your rp election like i'm going to say that if you are having this kind of diagram of two switches if you are changing let's say our switch one is work is working as a root bridge if you are changing the cost of interfaces at the end of switch one it will never affect your rp election if you if you change cost at the end of dp here at the end of root base it will never affect when your it, when it changes the dpdo it changes the zero cost zero cost vpdos so it will never add the cost of outgoing interfaces only and only receiving interface will add its own cost inside the total cost in received bpd messages matthew are you okay with it so remember that whenever you will you will uh, try to manipulate your rp election based on cost then you have to change it at the end of non dpm it means here in this case because switch to switch to is the non dpm right so you will you will change your cost at the end of dp i mean switch two only so let's move on switch two now first of all and on switch two i'll be doing that now let's say that i wanted to configure this 0 by 22 as a rp for villain 6 to 10 so now we are having two options either we can reduce the cost of 22 for villain 6 to 10 only or right. we can also add some more cost on 21 for villain 6 to 10 finally we have to define the cost of 22 for villain 6 to 10 lower than 21 so right now what can i say here i, I can say spanning tree cost right lower than 21 and by default their cost is 19 here i can configure it as 18 so if i configure if i configure this cost 18 in this manner so it will it will change this cost for all villains right it means now this port 22 will become rp for all villains now right but i wanted to configure this 22 as a rp for only villain 6 to 10 right so what will i say now spanning tree vlan 6 to 10 and then i can say cost like what 18 so this time you will see that this 22 will become rp root port but only for vlan 6 to 10 let me show you now for vlan 1 21 is still working as a root port for vlan 2 also 3 also 4 also 5 also but for 6 take it out Matthew so in this way you can perform manipulation by modifying the cost of the interfaces is there any problem now 
Of course, we can. I'll do that. Don't worry. Don't worry about that. I'll do that. So this time you can see all these things fine. And then after, I would also like to tell you that uh, uh, like I've done it. In this way, you can manipulate your RP legend by using cost. So now interface range fast Ethernet one. Sorry, fast Ethernet zero by twenty one by zero by twenty two, and then you can remove that port, that command from here. Like no span, you can configure no spanning three billion six to time cost eighteen fine. So now you again you can see show spanning three billion one two three four five six seven for all billions once again right now what i want that 22 should be configured as a rp for billion one to five but you are not allowed to do modification at the end of stage two now means that you cannot modify your cost now right you are not allowed to use cost to manipulate this path selection now so in that case you can also modify your designated port id designated port id because you cannot modify here you cannot manipulate this rp selection based on designated bridge id you have to skip designated bridge id after cost because after cost it is designated bridge id but in terms of switch 2 here designated bridge id on both interfaces will be will always remain same on switch 1 is not it whatever you will configure on switch one like bridge id yeah. it will be it will become for common for switch two on both interfaces on both links right so finally here you cannot manipulate your rp election based on designated bridge id but definitely you can manipulate this rp election based on designated port id fine so what i want that this 22 must be configured as rp for vlan 1 to 5 so now what can we do we can move again back on switch one and we can say switch money three vlan let's say switch money three vlan five or vlan six because sorry vlan five actually because this time i wanted to make changes for vlan one to five so for vlan one you can see that for 21 and 22 their priority is what 128 however interface id 23 is lower than 24 right so what can we do either either for vlan one to five define higher port priority on 21 or define lower port priority on 22 result will remain same so you can see now fast ethernet 1 by 0 by 20 what do you want 22 or 21 so you can say spanning tree will end 1 to 5 port priority lower than 1 sorry higher than 128 so next value will be because port priority can be configured in the increment of 16 only so after 128 it will be 140 for there is a rule of configuring this port priority that it can be configured in the increment of 16 only so next will be 144 on 21 so once you will configure it here let's say uh show spanning tree vlan one check it out still it will remain as dp it's not it but now you can see that on 21 it's port priority has been configured as 144 but for vlan 6 of course it will remain same see for both of them actual impact will be on switch 2 so spanning tree vlan 1 check it out its rp is now 22 but for vlan i mean for vlan 5 also its rp will be 22 but for vlan 6 its rp will be i mean will remain 21 any problem in it so you can manipulate your rp election based on cost as well as based on designated port id let me show you one more command here show the spanning tree vlan 1 interface fast ethernet 1 by 0 by 9 uh, 21 and then you can say detail. now 21 is in blocking state this is the port path cost i mean this is the cost of our interface right and port priority 128 is our r our own priority right this is port identifier this is our own port identifier fine and then designated root root priority i mean root this is the bridge id i mean this is the priority of bridge id right this yeah. is the system priority of bridge id 32769 because this is vlan 1 right yeah. for vlan 1 its priority will always be 32769 because by default system extended system id extended feature is enabled so remember that whatever you have configured system priority bridge priority on your device vlan number will always be added into 
your brace priority like if it is within one it means one would be added in your brace priority which is by default three two seven six eight so overall it will become three two seven six nine for villain one and this is the mac address of designated brace designated brace has private designated brace this see there are two things designated root and de designated brace id designated root id means root brace id designated brace id from where we are getting the bpd sometimes both of them will be common sometimes both of them will be different if yes, your designated brace is the root brace in that case these both things will be same but sender brace. exactly exactly if sender brace is not a root brace for an example let's say behind switch to you are having another switch switch 3 in case of switch 3 whenever you will check this i mean you will run this command on switch 3 you will find in designated bridge id it will be i mean it will be bridge id of switch 2 but in root bridge id it will be bridge id of switch 1 so i hope that now you have understood the meaning by this designated bridge id and root bridge id fine so then after you are also having designated port id this is the designated port id and this is designated path cost it means we are getting we are receiving zero cost vpdu yep. this will be that cost which is told by bpdu or which is coming inside the bpdu to, to reach root bridge right and then this is like messages by default and all these things right point to point by default it have transmit three bpdus at initial level because this is working as a known dp right so it will keep on to receive bpdu messages then you can also see the output for 22 as well 22 must be configured as a rp as you can see so i hope that now you have understood it that how can we manipulate it right but still let me show you that if your let's say for an example let me do one thing again i'll be having only one villain here no villain one to 100 do so history let me change let me remove this command as well show spanning tree it will again have default port id right so spanning tree again 21 will, will become rp is not it 21 how again become root port okay then after i will show you that if your rp goes down then it will take at least 30 seconds to move into coding before that uh, i just have a quick question mm -hmm. on, uh, mm -hmm. uh, where we this is this was regarding how to manipulate the root port election rp election for the sure media. sure but if we want to configure the root bridge election, if mm -hmm. we want to configure the root bridge manipulate, right? If you want to manipulate, then there is R either a, you can change the priority of the switch. Risk priority. Or there is a command which is root primary. Primary or right? secondary. secondary. Yeah, for so sure. Primary uh, make, make it the priority at 24,000 yeah. something. Yeah, I'll be discussing each and everything with you. Yeah, sure. And uh, that's to you. And secondary make it at 28,000 or something. Yeah, if, if you are using default priority, right? Yeah. If you're if on your switch you are having default priority like three two seven six eight and if you say primary then it will configure its brace priority as two four five seven six and if you say secondary then it will always configure its brace priority as two eight six seven two right and also it will be depending on that which switch is having lowest priority yeah. if your switch is having lowest priority as eight one nine two yeah eight one nine two and if you if you configure now primary keyword on any other switch then it will configure its priority as four zero nine six automatically but will it change the secondary as well no, 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 it no, 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 no,
and if there is a and uh, I mean true priority command. So switch one is having a priority. Switch one is having a root primary command, and uh, switch two is having the root secondary command. Yeah. Now uh, there is a switch three in the network, which has the priority of say eight one nine two. Then it will become root this. This will become root three, but I think whatever wherever you have configured primary will automatically drop its priority to lesser than eight one nine two, right? But then when you configure primary keyword after configuring that switch priority as eight one nine two. But if you have already configured your primary keyword and then after you are moving on any other switch and then after you are configuring its priority as eight one nine two, then it will become root three automatically. Oh, but if Already, you have configured your bridge priority as H192 on any one of these switches, and then after you are running this primary keyword, so it means primary command. So it will exchange the BPDU with exactly. all the switches. Exactly. Okay, fine. But will it? I mean, will the secondary behavior will also be changed? So that's why we always says that all switches must be having default priority, so that secondary can also take place. Otherwise, if you are having, I mean, if you are not having default priority on all switches, then of course secondary. I don't think so that it will take place. Okay. Only primary keyword will take place. Let me show you now. So I hope that now you have gone through this RP election, right? You can easily manipulate it. That how to, I mean this manipulation of RP. And also I have shown you that you can also run this command to check that what are the credentials of neighbor switch and what are the credentials of our switch, right? So this command will really help you. Then after what can we do that? Um, I can move back again on switch one to show history. And 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 interface range fast Ethernet one by zero by nineteen to twenty and fast Ethernet one by zero by twenty three to twenty four and that's it. No shit now. On switch two also interface range fast Ethernet one by zero by nineteen to twenty and fast Ethernet one by zero by twenty three to twenty four. Say. No shit. And all of them are having this default priority, right? Switch panic. And once again, you will see that switch three will become root place for all switches. Switch three will become root place, right? Now, I wanted to configure switch one as a root place for VLAN one to five, and I wanted to configure switch two as a secondary root place for VLAN one to five. And for VLAN six to ten, six to ten, let's say that I want to configure switch two as a root place and switch one as a secondary. Sure. Like I wanted to configure this. Switch one as a primary root place for VLAN one to five, okay. and for VLAN six to ten, I, I want to configure it as a secondary, right? Okay. On switch two for VLAN one to five, I'll configure it as a secondary. For VLAN six to ten, I'll configure it as a primary. So it's very simple, as you have already done it in during. Um, you have already done it in CCNS or CCMP, right? Like here, sparring tree VLAN one to five root primary, then sparring tree VLAN six to then root in same manner i'll configure the switch to so spanning tree vlan 125 6 to 10 root so 125 the prior since all of them are running at the default priority right? of course so but now they will change their Priority. Yeah, switch one will make it two, four, five, five, seven. For VLAN one to five only, one and switch two will also configure its priority, bridge priority as two, four, five, seven, six for VLAN six to ten only. Let me show you. So spanning three VLAN one on switch two. So it must not be a root bridge, and on root bridge its priority is what two, four, five, seven, six because VLAN one have also been added into it. So that is why it have become now two, four, five, seven, seven. Tell me. Uh, sorry. Uh, so why didn't it begin a, a switch? This is switch two, right? This is switch two. On switch two, I said secondary yeah, keyword. Yeah. I configured secondary keyword actually. Uh, so root priority is two four five seven six ten. Bridge priority is two eight six seven two. This is root bridge bridge ID, is and this is bridge ID bridge means it's our own. own. Yeah. yeah, that is why I said that because here. For VLAN 1 on switch 2, I said secondary keyword, right? I thought you were so, switch 1. No, no, this is switch 2, right? That is why I have configured 24577. Even here, you can see that 245, I mean, 
like villain one have been added into it right yeah. and this is the sec this is the effect of secondary keyword 28672 plus villain id it that's why it have become now 28673 right so this is the effect of it now if you want to see it for villain 6 now it means it is not having those villains here is it like that so villain 3 villain 1 2 10. now you will see issue spanning to villain 6 it must be configured as a root base now is not it and you can see that it have configured as a 2 4 5 7 6 okay. now if you move on like sys 3 or sys 4 mm. and if you configure spanning tree vlan 1 2 10 priority now it will not change priority. Priority. it should be an increment of 4 0 9 6 right so now you will say like you can configure anything less than two four five seven six like you configure two zero five seven six oh what was that basic eight one nine two two zero four eight zero right lower than two four five seven six and again you will see that it will become road place for all variants yeah. Root bridge 2, root bridge 4, 6, again root bridge. For VLAN 8, also it will be a root bridge, right? But now, if you want that, no, primary should be switch 1. Then you can do one thing, you can move again back on switch 1, you can say spanning 3, VLAN 1, 2, 5, and again root primary. But you need to negate this command? Yep, 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 yep. If you spanning 3, I have not negated this command yet, right? So yeah. spanning tree VLAN one. Check it out. It became root. And it have configured lower than two zero four seven six. No, build ID is still uh, yes, yes. It's not it. But here this time the effect of secondary keyword will not be there, remember. Or will there be? Like for an example. If I say spanning tree VLAN 6 to 10 root secondary. So let me show you so spanning tree VLAN like for an example 6. No. So secondary keyword is not gonna to do work in this case, right? Only primary keyword can work. Fine. So in this way you can use primary and secondary, but remember. If you know that your switches, some of the switches are, are not having default priority, then you will never use this primary and secondary. In that case, you will always try to change your bridge priority manually. Mm. Okay. Fine. So now what can you do now? Uh, on switch one, like a spanning tree, VLAN 125, priority is what? Yeah. <coughs> Sorry. And then spanning tree VLAN 6 to 10. 6 to 10. <coughs> Any problem? Sure. Okay. But still, <laughs> if anyone moves on Swiss 3 and configure its priority as 0, then finally they will compare their MAC addresses. And you know, we Swiss 3 is having lowest MAC address, and again, Swiss 3 can become root. For that purpose, to prevent your Swiss network root from guard. this kind of attacks, you are having root card. Root card can be a root card. Yeah. I will be discussing it with you. Don't worry about that, right? But in this way, you can manipulate your root base election. That is same as like you learned during CCNP as well. Next is like what can they do? If PVHT plus is running, they can say on both switches like no spanning tree VLAN 7. And there will be some users who should be participating in VLAN 7, right? So they can it can form now bridging loop and they will never be able to form EIGRP or OSPF neighborship. I mean, those two routers which are the member of VLAN 7 because due to this bridging loop, 
and we'll see some uh, flap ma ma of course you can you can like if i move back again on switch one you understand and uh, if i say like uh, no spanning tree wheel in seven it means so spanning tree wheel in seven is there nothing now you do one thing interface fast ethernet one by zero by one switch port mode access and switch port access vlan seven in same manner i'll move on r2 and on interface fast ethernet one by zero by two switch port mode access switch port access vlan seven and then finally i can move back on up one on its surface zero by zero let's say if it is twelve dot one dot one Now shut down. You will see that it will generate PC and BPDO. Switch one. Once its interface will come up. So spanning tree. It's aging time for VLAN seven. Let me show you. But VLAN seven is not there now. VLAN seven is not there. Right. So that is why it is not showing you anything. Okay, leave it. Uh, let's move on R two now. On its interface zero by one. IP address is what? Twelve dot one dot. They must be able to communicate with each other. It's not it, but it's still say without communicating itself, map flapping has occurred. It's not it. So you will see that R1 cannot communicate with R2. Of course, it cannot because now there is a bridging loop for VLAN 7 only, right? You see. Now let me show you. Like if you are on R1, so I can't run any single command here. See, I can't. Run. R2 is what. Nothing. Now you do one thing. Move on. Move back on switches. And say spanning tree VLAN. So see the performance of device. D2 two only. And once you will say spanning tree VLAN. So check it out. No problem. See commands are running smoothly. Even if you move on R1. Working fine. Right. So they can inject this this types of faults during troubleshooting over there. Matthew, mm -hmm. yes. ask. Yes. You are having something. Yes. Right. So now. After it, let's uh, talk about like I was talking about. I think this. Uh, you wanted to, you were talking about uh, uh, fifteen second it take forward delay time. Let me show you. Let me show you. Let me show you. The same shows it even enables. All devices are interconnected with each other, right? But this R one is just connected to switch one. Let me show you. Show spanning tree, VLAN one. This is root bridge, right? For VLAN one. So spanning tree VLAN seven. This is root bridge for no. This is not a root bridge, right? This is not a root bridge. And now let me show you. So spanning tree VLAN seven. Still, it's MAC address is in time. Now it have become see once again three hundred second. Previously it was because we made some changes here in VLAN seven, right? But again, it's is in time have become three hundred seconds. On switch two. Spanning tree, VLAN seven, three hundred seconds. So spanning tree, VLAN seven, three hundred seconds. Switch four, so spanning tree, VLAN seven, three hundred seconds. Okay, once again. Now, let me show you. I will be on switch one. I'll say debug spanning tree events. I'm going to shut down this R1 interface. I wanted to show you that if it's, even if access port goes down, then also it will jump back. Now, so spanning tree VLAN 7. MAC address in time is on switch 2. What is this? On switch 3. What is this? On switch four, four million seven. I 
and again you will see that it will become 300 seconds so it took like might be took 30 seconds approximately or 15 seconds to move back again on 300 seconds because now there is no change right and in case if it comes up again comes up right if it comes back up right if you move on r1 and you said no shut down again you will see that it will generate still it have not generated any tcn you know why because it have not put this interface into the forwarding state whenever it will put this interface into the forwarding state then it will generate tcn bpd right that is why still you can see that its mac address is in time will remain as 300 seconds let it move into the forwarding state then it will generate tcn bpd right just wait for a moment see tcn right and for villain 7 for villain 5 see it's now aging is aging time is about 15 seconds for all villains previously okay so now on switch 2 also okay 22 was flapped actually 22 was flapped I don't know why but 22 was flapped yeah, that is why it generated it that's why it generated uh, TCN for all villains here mm. this 22 show interfaces uh, sorry she's panic tree once again okay fine just panic tree VLAN. So check it out now again see still it is having 15 seconds right and then after you will see that again it will become 300 300 seconds just wait for a moment So is it really necessary for switches to generate TCN BPDU while their access ports goes down or comes up? Of course no. It is not necessary, right? So to solve this problem, what can we do? We can enable port fast feature, right? Like interface, uh, fast Ethernet, one by zero by one. I can see switch port. Sorry, spanning tree. That's it. And this time you will see that I have already enabled debug spanning tree. Debug spanning tree. Yes, I, I have enabled debugging here on switch one and now let's move back on r1 and let's shut it down once again right so previously when we shut down this interface it generated tcn bpdu but this time it have not right because it have not generated an tcn bpdu so for will inside you will see that it's mac at this is in time will remain 300 seconds on all switches like if you move on switch four as well configure with this command you will see that mac at this in time will be 300 seconds only so this is the advantage of configuring port for feature and another inter and another advantage will be it like will be now it will put this interface directly into the forward forwarding state. Than going from the yeah, you can see show VLAN brief. right even if it comes up again let's move back again on our one say no shut down i'll show you that it will directly move it will directly jump from blocking to forwarding and it will not generate any tc in the video that is why again you can see show spanning tree billion seven its mac address is in time will remain as so by using port for feature you can also reduce unnecessarily flooding of frames Unnecessary, unnecessary and not unicast flooding is not it because Mac switches can flush their Mac entries from their Mac tables mm -hmm. sooner and if they flush the Mac entries Mac and Mac entries from their Mac table sooner then of course whenever because end users will maintain their ARP table for a long time so whenever next time they will generate any traffic then switches will not be having those I mean those destination Mac addresses available inside their Mac table so that they will perform flooding it's not it yeah. so this is the uses of port far feature 
So one thing like you can enable portfolio feature under interface or default as well as you have another my god what is happening actually 22 it's okay flapping it's flapping you can just uh because to it's not problem see show a spanning tree so let me show you now the uses of uplink fast fine like for an example we are now no vlan 1 2 10 and uh, default interface fast ethernet 1 by 0 by 1 here on switch 1 the same command i'll configure on switch 2 as well default interface fast ethernet 1 by 0 by 1 so yeah, I was telling you that you can also enable port fast feature in this manner as well. Spanning tree port fast default. So what do you mean by this default yeah, command? Access, access port yeah. automatically, right? This command will not force this switch to enable port fast feature on trunk ports, right? This command would, I mean, by configuring this command, now port fast will get enabled only on access ports. And to understand, I mean, to confirm whether this default port fast feature is enabled or not, for that show sure. sure. spanning tree summary this command will tell you that whether this default port for feature is enabled or not uh, in show interface by ethernet 0 try 0 switch port will it show something like related port fast feature yeah. show interface fast ethernet 1 by 0 by 1 switch port switch port is not going to show you anything related to those so you can just right. include uh, because this is all about the switch port only right the same switch port is portfast. The last word. Okay. The same command but last word portfast. Mm. Oh, switch port and then switch port. Instance for switch port. Okay, then you can this port fast. Yeah. Yeah. The command tell us nothing. Port fast. No. That is show spanning tree summary. Just spanning tree. Yeah, that's summary. Yeah, that From here you can see the default, right? Mm, show spanning tree interface. Portal. Yeah, then say like that. Show spanning tree interface. Fast then one by zero by one and then port fast. Here you can see. Oh, okay. So we have enabled it directly, but will it show it on the other one as well? Oh yeah. On switch, uh, another switch. No, it's not VTP. No, 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 no. not uh, on the other switch. Say for example, we enabled it on all the. Mm -hmm. uh, let me show you. Let me show you. Let me show you. Let me show you. Uh, like for an example, if I move on R2 now, and on R2, I will say FA0 by 0, and then no shut. And before running this command, again I will come back on session and I will say debug spanning the events. Let's move back again on R2 and say no shut down. You will see directly it will move from blocking into opening. See. Or fast, uh, of course, default. I mean, it but remember that it will be applicable only for access yeah, ports, not for uh, ports. Type for the path, it comes like you know, to, yeah, sure, for sure. It will show you that it is enabled, uh, okay. right? So now it has been enabled. Uh, I mean, we have enabled this port fast globally now. So, in exam, if they say that okay with using single command enable port for feature on all access ports right so you will be using this command okay. and to confirm it whether this default command is enabled or not show command is show spanning tree summary from here you can see that port fast default right so it is now enabled fine so in this way you can configure it now let me tell you the uses of uplink fast so what can we do again i'll shut down all other interfaces uh, to show we then break a bit i mean I'll be connecting switch 1 and switch 2 only, right? So interface range fast ethernet 1 by 0 by 19 to 20. Yeah, and then fast, we need a direct notification where at least one of the ports should be in the alternate. Exactly, that's what I'm having here. Like 19 and 20 are there, right? So Same command I'll configure on switch two, right? Now you see that switch two is not a root brace actually. Switch spanning tree. You see that switch one is a root brace and this twenty one is configured as a root port now, right? Okay. In case let's let me show you debug spanning tree events. And one more thing that I would like to show you here because uh, uh, like spanning tree port fast default. I have, I'm also enabling this feature here as well uh, on switch two and uh, let me do one more thing oh my god this 22 is 
Ha, huh, we have to do something so that we can perform all this battery. Uh, only cable was the issue actually. Okay, um, just pine tree. Only we one is only here, right? Port fast feature is already enabled now. And now I'm gonna draw this diagram in this manner actually. Like I'm having only two switches here. And uh, switch one, switch two. This is something like this. 0 by 21, 0 by 21, sorry, 22. 0 by 21 and this is 0 by 22. Here R1 is there. This is R2. R1 0 by 0 is connected with switch 1 0 by 1. R2 0 by 1 is connected with switch 2 0 by 2, right? Both of them are in same VLAN, VLAN 1, right? And the IP address is going to be 12.1.1 here. And here it is already configured 12.1.2, right? So they must be able to communicate with each other. Let me show you. So let's first of all let's see the output of six. Let me show you see 21 right then let's move on r2 to show ip interface bridge actually let me show you the ip addresses yeah that's fine and fa0 by 1 yeah that's fine show cdp never r2 must be connected with how is it possible okay i configured i think ip address on fa0 by 0 shut it down show cdp What is this? We have made it on fast and zero slash one. And yeah, and one. inside CDP neighbor, it is showing me my local interface is FA zero by zero. Only R1 is connected, that's fine. Show CDP neighbor. Mm, R2. <laughs> And on R2, I still need to be showing you 0, 5, 0. <laughs> yeah. And it is, so it is not showing it is connected with switch 2. Yeah, it is showing me switch 1. But switch 2 is showing me that it is connected with R2. So, how, why? why? <laughs> so, see, <laughs> Do one thing now CDP <laughs> run so CDP name nothing CDP anyways this time it should show says to only <laughs> Okay, no problem. Let's move again back on this two. And uh, first of all, very very first thing, let's show uh, William B. This zero by two must be member of. Uh, okay, then we have to say default interface fast with net one by zero by two. Fine. Show William B. That's fine. And uh, switch one zero by one must be in member must be member of William one. It is already. So from R1, let's try to communicate with 12.2. It must be. See, from R2, you can also try to communicate with. Fine. Show CD network. This time it is showing you correctly, right? So it's 2 only. Okay, now see. Ping 12.1.1. Repeat. To keep on to communicate with switch one now see okay let it be let's move again on switch two now show spanning tree how to say debug spanning tree events now to show you that okay it will take at least 30 seconds to move into forwarding state right now let me do one thing fa1 by zero by 
sign the token Yeah, it is okay. Yes. Okay. Is 21 right? I'm gonna do shut down this interface now on stage two. If I shut down this interface, you will see that 22 will take at least 30 seconds to move into forwarding state. Till that, R2 will, will I mean R2 will not be able to communicate with R1. So it will, it R2 has to drop at least 15 ICMP packets. Because ICMP eco reply timeout is what? Two seconds. So still it is communicating perfectly, but now let's move on stage two and on zero by twenty one. You will see that see 22 have immediately moved into listening state but data will not be forwarding see it is not forwarding data so at least i mean this is kind of direct topology change right so as i said that the convergence time for direct topology change will be at least 30 seconds right so of course for next 30 seconds there will not be any communication between the users behind switch one and switch two as you can see here as well means that on switch 2 it have moved into the forwarding state even you can see that at sharp 34 41 it moved into listening state at sharp 35 11 which is like 30 seconds is not it it took sharp 30 seconds to move into forwarding state and here also you can see that how many packets were dropped like 3 4 5 15 3 5 5 10 and plus 515 15 ICMP packets were dropped due to SGP. connectivity loss right due to outages in your network fine so to solve this problem now what can we do I will move back again on switch to interface FA0 by 21 and then I'll say I'll say no shut down and one more thing the the most dangerous thing is like this that in case if it comes up comes back up again right again then it will take 30 seconds see now 21 jumped into forwarding state because it, it didn't knew that it is a trunk port right it was thinking that it is an access port that's why it jumped into forwarding state when it came to know no it is a, it is a trunk port again it moved back into worsening state see until that there would not be any communication this is the this is the dangerous thing about it 22 which was acting as a forwarding first of all first of all it it thought so it's thought that 21 is an access port because port first default feature was enabled so it directly put this interface into the forwarding state as you can see here right but then uh, later on it came to know that okay it is a trunk port so it moved back into the listening state from forwarding state yeah but the 22 one yeah 22 will directly move back into the blocking state again okay. so shouldn't uh, at the same time yeah, but shouldn't 22 actually be uh, moved to blocking state after the 21 move to forwarding state? So it has done actually. I still see 21 is not in forwarding state now. 21 is 21 in listening is state. Listening state. Uh -huh. But ideally, after enabling the port fast, uh, after enabling the uplink fast, uh -huh. there is no uplink fast now. Right. After enabling uplink fast, this uh -huh. 22 which is in blocking, which moves to blocking state immediately. So switch one turned into a listening that state. will be different thing that will be different concept right i'm not talking about the uplink fast i mean i'm not talking about those states which will come uh, after enabling uplink fast but right now you can see that if you do not have uplink fast feature right mm -hmm. so if you're 21 i mean if your root port primary root port goes down then secondary root port will take at least 30 seconds to move into the forwarding set and again mm -hmm. if your primary root port comes up comes back up right again it will take 30 seconds to converge right it is the yeah of course it will be more, more than, more than like uh, 18 and uh, yeah like 32 seconds 32 seconds 34 yeah 34 seconds so that's the biggest biggest problem now that's the biggest problem but one more thing one more thing you will you will you will you will calculate it hey 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 guys guys you will calculate it from yeah. here when 22 moved back into blocking state because the forward is still yeah yeah, yeah. No, yes yes, yes. Back. right because if 22 is in forwarding state till that it will be it will keep on to forward data forward traffic right so at at 23 it moved into the blocking state and then after as you can see like 
approach 30 seconds no no it should be from 22 because at 22 mm -hmm. why because the 22 i'm not talking about the uh, i'm talking about the convergence time i'm not talking yeah, about no, that how much time taken by 21 yeah. to move into forward yeah time. i'm talking so about the convergence, convergence time. time since at 22 this fast ethernet joint like your slash 21 move from blocking to lifting state right um, you will always calculate the timer from where your communication was blocked so your communication your traffic was dropped from this timer because it moved this 22 moved into the blocking state at this time till that it will keep on to transmit your data yeah it will keep on because the fast internet one slash 22 was in forwarding state right but the states one particular port has three states like listening learning mm -hmm. so at 22 it moved <laughs> it moved to listening doesn't state. matter that what was happening with 21 right because 22 was already in forwarding is there so it was transmit it was sending your data right your track your data your traffic was going through the 22 actually no what i'm trying to say is that mm -hmm. it behaved correctly and it moved from 22 to 52 not mm -hmm. from 18 or 23 mm -hmm. because 22 went into the listening state at 21 went into the listening state at 22 yeah of course that's why it took like 30 seconds up to forwarding state right but communication was blocked from this time yeah of course the communication was blocked from this time right so it's working fine now yeah. and now let me show you okay one more thing here let me stop it first and once again i will start this communication right and uh, it is working fine there's no problem at all and uh, on switch 2 also shows panic free that's fine that's 21 how again become the root code right i mean primary is 21 actually and then after i'm gonna to enable uplink fast feature now spanning free uplink fast after enabling this feature you will see she's spanning free so it should be enabled since these are only the two switches right a spanning tree i mean this it have not been enabled actually sure, tell me why uplink fast is not enabled because if uplink fast is enabled it must have shown me here that uplink fast is enabled however if you say if you say show spanning yeah, free uplink, uplink fast then it will show you uplink fast is enabled but it's not gonna to do work it's not gonna to do work let me show you that it will it will not work here you know why let me show you debug is spanning free sorry events if i shut down this f is zero by 21 step by step it's not it till that no communication because uplink fast was not functioning you know why because this as i said the primary requirement for it that at least i mean the switch must have its default breeze priority switch must have its default breeze priority but this switch was having 4096 actually for this vlan one so first of all you have to remove that command from here let me remove that command from here and i will simply remove only that command Oh, where is that? No, it has not been. You can just do show run include. Just wait, just wait. This is no. Just come until let me show you now. Uplink fast will get it. It's not it. Just after configuring its priority as default priority, now uplink fast has been enabled automatically, right? And then after, because 21 is the primary root port now, right? So it's spanning free, uplink fast. I mean, it will show you that, okay, uplink fast is, na is enabled now, right? Now, debug, spanning free, events. Let me show you one more thing that still traffic is going without any problem. Interface fast is enabled by 0 by 21. Let me shut down this. Just after, shutting down it you will see that is there any problem traffic is going perfectly let me stop it now but at least one packet will get dropped there was some outage yeah. so even after enabling a fast feature there will be some outages but it will be really? brief outages and users will not will not be able to experience this kind of outages yeah but if like uh, there are some applications uh, mm -hmm. like you are talking about voice data so for that moment only 
might be that your voice will voice based traffic will not be delivered because voice based traffic will be delivered within milliseconds so if there are there is some delay more than milliseconds then of course it, it can cause a big problem right so for that type of date i mean for that type of network of, of course you do not have anything to do here even after enabling uplink fast as well so this is the role of uplink fast and one uh, another thing is also there you know what is that like for an example if you are communicating previously if primary was coming up coming back up mm. again it was taking 30 seconds right no, it yeah, but this time it will not i mean there will not be any connectivity loss actually yeah. uh, still it will take 35 seconds primary root port will take like if you have i mean if your primary root port has gone down right and again if primary root port comes back up it will take 35 seconds but during those 35 seconds there will not be any connectivity loss let me show you I'm not I'm going to not shut down this interface now and uplink first is enabled on this switch too right yeah so it I just wanted to read the debug for uh, when you shut down so when you shut down this 22 will be like was elected as a new port yeah. automatically and immediately immediately move to forward immediately right? hmm. okay now you see the 20 21 move to forwarding state let me show you it moved directly from Blocking. jump I mean jumped from blocking to forwarding you know why because it thought that it is an access port but later on it came to know that it is a trunk port yeah but and if it is a trunk port then again it have moved back into the listening step yeah but then and immediately it have started this root port delay timer which is for 35 seconds yeah but till that time 22 was still of course of course of course you see communication is there still it is communicating with that yeah it is already i mean 22 is still in forwarding state once 22 will move back into the you see now they have interchanged it immediately right and there is no there is no profit right there is no connectivity loss but one packet one packet yeah, yeah there is yeah double this is yeah. why why is there a problem the PDU? Of course, at least it will take some time to. Yeah. So that's the only thing. So it, since there are only two switches, you configure it on switch two. But in case if there are so many switches, and if you need to configure uplink fast, you need to configure it on all those switches where you have at least one port. Alternate. As a alternate. Alternate. Port, right. If you do not have any alternate port, then of course there will not be any advantage of enabling this uplink fast feature. Fine. So this is the uses of uplink fast feature, and I, I have also shown you that how does it, I mean, how does it perform actually. I have also taught you that what is the meaning by this root port delay timer. I mean, it is by default 35 seconds, as you can see here. From here, 28 plus 35, it will be in forwarding state. Check it out. 28 plus 35. During this period, what's You have configured ether channel, PACP negotiation, DTP negotiation, yeah, and all. And all. But it will assume it, right? It's not like if PACP is there, then it will change its timer. <laughs> because you will always create a standard, a standard technology, right? Mm -hmm. It is not like that if PACP is configured, then it will take no. 35 it's seconds. 54. Yeah, that's why by default it is 35 seconds. So that within 35 seconds, it can. Ne it, it can perform all that kind of negotiation like you know very well that by default if PACP is there PACP will also take some time to negotiate ether channel as well right it can take like five seconds and more than that right and 30 seconds are for listening and learning is so that is root delay timer yeah that is root delay timer and it is good actually it is good because if primary is flapping I very point if primary port primary rp is flapping then how will you identify it because if it comes up again it will become root port will go down again secondary will become root port will come up again primary will, will become root port right so this is good actually mm -hmm. right so in this way it will work Then after, let me show you the uses of backbone first. Is it really necessary to go for that backbone first? Yeah, I think switches. you can. I will require to have three switches. Yeah. I can. I mean, 
it is mandatory to draw that uh, that diagram i mean it, i must be having at least at least three switches to perform that practical indirect topology chain notification yeah, of course like in previous class i taught you that okay if uh, like switch 2 was not having any alternate port mm -hmm. switch 2 lost connectivity with switch 1 then switch 2 became as root phase it started to generate inferior bit so switch 3 waited for okay. 20 seconds right mm -hmm. then after it put switch 3 put that uh, blocking port into the listening mm -hmm. state right then again listening it learning it needs to be enabled on all the switches backbone fast backbone yeah, fast backbone but uplink fast is not necessary to enable on all switches right and but backbone fast must be enabled on all query to the uh, exactly like in backbone fast you are having two types of messages one is root link query and one is uh, root link uh, response, response. Yeah, and uh, once you enable that one part, you will get the R L Q response. Exactly, exactly, uh, exactly. Root link query request, root link query response. response. There are two types of messages available in backbone fast. I mean, in backbone fast feature. One more thing, if you have not enabled backbone fast feature on any one of these switches, and if that switch receives any root link query request or root link response. query response, it will simply drop that. that is why we always says that okay backbone fast must be enabled on all switches right so this is the only reason so that it should be enabled on all switches so now you tell me please if should i go i mean should i require to go for backbone fast as well like i perform this uh, uplink fast okay so let's do one thing now let's go for stp protection yeah root guard yeah root guard right first of all let's talk about the root guard only however generally we do not uh, prefer to use all these things like root guard yeah of course root guard is needed but after launching udld there is no more requirement of enabling root guard <laughs> sorry loop guard right so let's talk, let's start from root guard itself as i said that if you have configured switch one as a root root bridge right and uh, you configured its bridge priority lowest as lowest one which is zero but someone else configured their bridge priority as i mean bridge priority as zero as well then final decision would be based on their mac addresses might be that if your switch is oldest one of course it will be having lowest mac address right mm -hmm. so of course your switch can become root bridge and if your root bridge root bridge have changed it means entire data flow will get changed So, if you want to prevent your switch network from these type of attacks, then of course you can use yeah, this root card. But, but remember, DP. <coughs> DP. You know why? What is the rule of DP in STP? It, it the transmits the DP. DP. It is never desired. It is never ex expected actually to receive any BPD on DP. Because if you receive BPD masses on DP, it means it will immediately lost its DP state. Yeah. I mean, if it receives any superior BPD, right? On its DP. I mean, if DP receives any superior BPD, then it will immediately lost its DP state. Remember, but it must receive superior BPD. What is it? What is the meaning by superior BPD? With the higher. With the lowest. Lower I mean, with the best bridge ID, right? Yeah. So, if DP receives any superior BPD, then it will immediately lost its DP state. But here, after enabling root guard on DP, remember that. you will enable this root guard only on dp trunk ports only on dp trunk ports right so if you enable root guard if you configures this root guard on dp then after if it receives any bpd masses then it will directly move into root inconsistent state for that vlan only for for which it received that superior bpd it will move in root inconsistent state only for that vlan because if it moves into error disable state it means it will move in in, in error disable state for all vlans because error disable state is not like per vlan or something like that if your switch port moves into error disable state it means it will move in error disable state for all vlans but here it will move into root inconsistent state now the question is what is the difference in between root inconsistent state i mean what is the difference in between inconsistent state and error disable state like in inconsistent state your port can recover automatically once your problem with will get resolved but if your switch port has moved into error disable state then it will always remain in error disable state unless you don't reset it manually like you will require to shut it down manually and then you have to or or you will require to configure error disabled auto recovery or error disabled recovery right 
so this is the main difference in between inconsistent and error disabled and one more thing like as i said that in your switch port will move in inconsistent state for a vlan for a specific vlan but switch port will move into a disabled state for all vlans fine so these are the differences so now let's say you are having this kind of network like this is switch one this is switch two this is switch three you understand this is root bridge so it's going to be dp dp rp rp let's say this is dp and this is what block now behind switch 2 someone added this new switch with lowest bridge id so if this switch this switch becomes root bridge then of course it will become dp here it will become rp and then it will also try to send dpd messages in the direction of switch 1 as well as switch 3 but here because it is already configured as dp so you will enable here root card here it is already configured as dp here you will enable root guard so after enabling root guard on these interfaces if they receive any superior bpdu then they will immediately put that interface into inconsistent state for that specific vlan only for which they received bpdu messages got it so for the, the, that time they will and one more thing but for switch two of course this switch will be root base but for these two switches switch one will remain as a root base so remember that it does not provide you 100 percent security yeah but uh, so for till that time, mm -hmm. uh, the connectivity, since it will be in the root, I mean, this DP will be in the root inconsistent state. Mm -hmm. Of course, till this switch is announcing itself as a root base. Once this switch will stop to announce itself as a root base, then these interfaces will move into that, I mean, into normal state dynamically. So in the root, basically, what my question is, in the root inconsistent state, there will be no data. Of course, but only for that VLAN, not yeah, for all okay. VLANs. So at least we know where the block is. Exactly. Will it generate any log as well? Uh, like in the yeah, it will. It will. It will. It will. Let me show you. That's it. This is switch one. Just panning three. You know very well that what is happening here. And uh, this is also. Let me disable opening fast here. Just so panning three. Opening fast. Just so panning three. No problem. Now let's do one more thing. Let's configure this priority as 4096 now. Spanning three, VLAN one. Priority is what? 4096. So it will remain as root base because switch two was having default priority, right? So switch one will remain as root base. There will not be any problem. And then after, um, because I know that, okay, these two ports are DP, right? So on these two interfaces, interface phase fast Ethernet 1 by 0 by 21 to 22, you understand? And then I will say spanning three guard is what? Root. Remember, root guard cannot be enabled globally root card cannot be enabled globally so now she's spanning tree she's spanning tree to see whether root card has enabled or not she's uh, spanning tree interface fast ethernet 1 by 0 by 21 and then detail so what would have happened if we would have configured this root card instead of uh, dp on all the switch on all the ports <laughs> The meaning by DP, I mean, if you enable root card, it means then after you must you must not receive any BPD on, on that interface. So it will move into root inconsistent. Sorry, yeah, of course, root inconsistent still. I will show you, don't worry, right? So here I've enabled now root card even on 0 by, I mean, 0 by 1 by 22 as well. Root card is enabled now, right? Then after, let me move on, switch to, because for switch to switch one is working as a root base but then after i decided to configure the switch to i mean i'm an attacker right if i i am an attacker and i configure the switch to as a root base now i try to configure it right like i said spanning tree within one priority is what zero so now the switch one will become root base it's not it but this time check it out for only vlan one remember root inconsistent state right and one more thing if you are having like vlan 2 as well so vlan 3 of course vlan 2 is there now and so spanning tree let me show you for vlan 1 only these two interfaces are in root inconsistent state but for vlan 2 there is no problem at all even if you move on switch to so spanning tree vlan 2 no problem at all yes root port is still 21 
because I didn't configure this priority as 0 for VLAN 2. I configured this priority as 0 for only for VLAN 1. Right, so I hope that now you have understood the uses of root card. Fine. But remember that, however, the switch one have put 21 and 22 in root inconsistent state for VLAN 1. Traffic of VLAN 2 and all other VLANs, right? Traffic of all other VLANs will still be allowed through these trunk ports. There will not be any problem for other, I mean, for all those users which belongs to, oh, I mean, uh, other, other VLANs. Matthew, any problem? Tell me, road guard. Can you just drop yeah, now, 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 let me, let me do one thing. Like you asked me that question that can, can't we enable this root guard on all switch ports? It's yeah. not possible. Remember, it will be it, this is this feature root guard will get enabled only on DP. DP, and I will also tell you one another condition for it. Let me remove it from here. Interface range fast Ethernet, uh, uh, 1 by 0 by 21222. And let me say no spanning free, uh, then after. No spanning tree and uh, it was guard, right? So I have him disabled it now from here. So spanning tree, of course, they will there will not be any problem. And now switch one will become switch two will become root brace. And let me do one thing. Uh, let me say no spanning tree, priority zero, something like that. So spanning tree, and there's no problem actually. If this, this it must not be actually. Do you have on switch one? That's good. Yeah. Then, it is on switch one, it is now 4097, right? That's why switch one have become root base. Yeah. All right. Then you said that can't we enable this root card on all interfaces? So let's try to configure it here. Interface range fast Ethernet 1 by 0 by 21. And then I'll, I'll say spanning tree guard. Happy. And also it have put, I mean it have put these interfaces into root inconsistent, root inconsistent state for both VLANs. Let me show you. VLAN one. I also control this VLAN. So remember, this feature must not be enabled at the end of non DP. So we have configured it on non DP, and it ha it automatically receives into the root inconsistent. Mm -hmm. So it it receives superior BPDU, mm -hmm. and uh, immediately it put into the root inconsistent. Simple. Hmm. Can you ex just explain your vision of what happened then? What? Explain what happened now. Like now. Yeah, I think I think this will get. Explain the vision of what happened. Because switch two no, actually he wanted to ask. Yes, yes, that's what I'm saying. Like nothing will happen yes. now. Communication will not be allowed. You have you have blocked everything now. You have thrashed your network. Yeah. So remove it now. See, root guard must not be enabled at the end of non DP. If you enable it at the end of non-DP, because non-DPs will always receive BPDUs from DP. Mm -hmm. So if you suspect that, okay, on this interface, you can receive BPDUs in future also, then never enable root card. And that is why it is also recommended that in case of load balancing, that if you are using PVST, it means you will also configure load balancing, right? Like for, uh, in, in some cases, uh, one switch one will be root brace for some VLANs, switch two will be root brace for some other VLANs. So one single port will be either, I mean, will be DP for some of the VLANs and can also be non DP for some other VLANs too. Mm -hmm. Are you getting my point? Yeah. Single switch port can be DP for some VLANs and can also be non DP for other VLANs, right? Yeah. So if something, I mean, if it is happening something like that, in that case, you will never enable this feature on that switch port, never ever. Because whenever it will receive any BPDU, it will directly transition your switch port. It will directly transition root your switch port in root inconsistent state for that specific VLAN. And one more thing I would like to tell you, you cannot enable this feature under interfaces for 
some villains only for a, for a specific yeah, villain. That is the problem. You cannot enable this root guard feature for some specific villains only under interfaces. No. If you enable this feature under any interface, then it will get enabled for all VNs. So in case of load balancing, again, you cannot, you cannot enable this feature. That is why in live networks, you will, I mean, normally you will never get this feature turn on. I mean, you, this feature available on switches. Of course, you will never get it. You will never find it. Because generally we avoid all these things yeah you will definitely find ppd guard and ppd filter enabled on all access ports on all access ports it's really mandatory to prevent further trunking. uh to prevent not from trunking only even and to detect any switch. actually like even if your port is access port then also it allows the ppd use for one VLAN only right i mean which is configured on that access port Hmm. So sometimes what happens that it might be that you will be receiving BPDUs for that specific VLAN. Let me let me show you. For an example, this is like switch one. This is switch two, and this is host right and. <laughs> I'm not touching it, but it's writing. Oh. Sometimes it happens. So if this is switch one, I'm not touching it. See? Let's use the marker. Instead of this. Ah, it's not making noise, hmm? <laughs> okay, so in this way, if, if your connectivity is in is in this way, right? So let's say this this is this this access port is in VLAN ten, right? So it's still this switch can transmit PPDUs of VLAN ten out, out from this access port, right? And also can receive PPDUs by default for VLAN ten. So might be that if this user have become now attacker. And it have started to generate BPD masses for VLAN 10. And if it is generating BPD masses with lowest bridge ID, it means it can become now root bridge for VLAN 10. So it is really necessary for us to enable some security feature on this access port. And the best feature is BPD filter, as you know. I'll be discussing it with you that why why BPD filter is best rather than BPD guard. BPD guard puts it in the error disabled state. BPD filter stops and send receives the BPD right? So, which one is better? Filter. Why? It will not put it into the error disabled state. It's not like that. You cannot say that BPD guard is taking like, I mean, it's BPD guard is putting your interface into the error disabled state. That is why BPD guard is not good and BPD filter is. Because in BPD guard, I mean, I mean see, it, in case of BPD guard, what happens that it will take an action against the received BPDUs only, right? Yeah. But if it will never stop all outgoing BPDUs. But if it never ever. Right. But if it will put it in the error disabled, right? How will it send the BPDU? <laughs> I'm saying that let's say that this user is not generating BPDUs, but still it can receive BPDUs and it can get information coming from your switch. Is not it? If it capturing BPDUs coming from this switch. Hello. I can get. I said that here. This is the root bridge for VLAN 10 now, right? Okay. So it will generate BPD. Will give it the switch two, and then switch two can also transmit these BPDUs if BPD guard is enabled, right? Towards this PC. So this PC, I mean, if this is an attacker, right? Yeah. This PC, I mean, an attacker is sitting on this PC. It right. can capture those BPDUs and can get your switches information. It's not it. Okay. But if you have enabled BPD filter. No. If you have enabled BPD filter, it will never transmit BPDUs. If, if this is an attacker, it is just listening. It listening. Is it is not attacking. generating BPDUs. Oh, okay. Hmm. So for that purpose, BPD filter is uh, better than BPD guard. It will not handle everything. Exactly. If it receives it, it will ignore them. And also it will 
stop all outgoing BPD users work. Yeah. So, okay, leave it. So I was telling you about the root guard, right? So remember that root guard must be enabled only on that interface, which is DP trunk for all VLANs. If your trunk port is non-DP for any single VLAN, then also you will never enable this feature on that interface. Fine. Then after talking about the root guard, because I have also proved it now, right? That how does it really function? Like for an example, again, if you said like uh, you enable it on switch one interface next fast is network by zero by spanning tree guard fine and then after you can move and again on switch one you can see spanning tree VLAN one and priority is two. And again you will see that switch two would put so the switch one will put these this interface I mean these interfaces into root, root inconsistent mm -hmm. state. Let me show you for VLAN one root inconsistent state. But once you will remove this command from switch two, once the switch two will stop to generate VPD messages, then again you will see that you will not require to do anything at the end of switch one. It will automatically put these two interfaces into normal state. Right? Let me show you. See, unblocked. Simple. This is the advantage of having inconsistent state over error disabled state. Second thing, as I said that generally we will not prefer to enable this root card in the network because most of the time you will all you will find load balancing algorithm load balancing in your network right like one interface would be dp for some of the VLANs, and same interface can also be non dp for the same for i mean some for some VLANs. some of the VLANs, right so you will not you will never enable this feature on all those interfaces that's why we do not prefer to use this uh, feature of stp security feature of stp next is what loop card like we says that stp prevents our switch network from the bridging loops but still there are some yeah. there are some possibilities of forming of forming bridging loops as well like for an example if this is switch one switch two switch three zero by one two one two one to you understand and uh, let's say mac address is a b c it's going to be dp it's going to be dp rp rp dp block you understand yes. now in case for an example let's say that in between switch one and switch three this time i'm not saying that interface has gone down due to some reasons because it is always expected to receive bpd on its uh, non dp right on switch 3 because it is primary rp right this is primary rp root port however it is also having alternate port but the thing is primary root port is what zero by one so it is always expected to receive bpd use in every two seconds coming from root bridge right now let's say interface is up but now switch 3 has stopped to receive bpd use coming from switch one on its rp it has stopped whatever it is whatever the reason right might be it is like ios bug or something like that whatever it is but finally you i mean the swiss free <laughs> swiss three have stopped to receive bpd use coming from switch one now so there can be any reason right so if swiss three stops to receive bpd use on its zero by one maxes of superior BPD is what 20 seconds it will wait for 20 seconds now right it will wait for 20 seconds and after 20 seconds because it will lost its non dp state it will lost its non dp state because now it have stopped to receive BPD on this interface and the maxes timer of BPDU is what 20 seconds so after 20 seconds now it will put it into the listening state you understand and finally it will become rp and because on one switch you cannot have more than one rp and because it have it is also not receiving any bpd here so automatically it will become now dp hello it will automatically become dp because it is not receiving any bpd on this interface right and i said as earlier earlier earlierly i have already taught you these things that in a single segment both ends cannot be either dp or rp i mean non dp right mm -hmm. if it is something like that it means there is a bridging loop so now because both ends will become dp and now there can be a bridging loop is there any interface which is in blocking state now 
so they can form a bracing loop have you understood it now so there is no solution in stp for this type of problem for that purpose actually we are having loop card and this kind of problem can occur due to sudden loss of bpdu right this type of problem can occur due to sudden loss of bpd right so to prevent your network from bridging loops due to sudden loss of bpdu we are having a solution of it which is loop card so we can enable loop card here but remember loop card will always enabled only on non dp only on non dp you will never enable this loop card feature on dp designated ports right yeah. okay now because it was working as a rp earlier on right so you will enable loop card here you will also enable loop card here because it is block blocking it means it is also non dp i'm saying that loop card will be enabled on on all non dp and under non dp you have both of them blocking as well as rp root code is not it and after enabling loop card if you do not receive bpdu for any vlan right it will immediately put that switch port into loop inconsistent state now let's say it was rp and now it have suddenly it have stopped to receive bpdus coming from switch one right so it will put this interface now into loop inconsistent state you understand and if this switch port moves it to i mean if if switch port if this switch port becomes rp and moves into forwarding state then there will not be any loop because switch three has already put this interface into loop inconsistent state and if your switch port is in loop inconsistent state it means it will not allow your traffic your data have you understood it now so this is the solution of this kind of problem so now <coughs> to implement it what can we do here let's say that this is switch one and let me do one thing no vlan uh to actually show spanning tree you will you will uh find only only and only vlan one and both of them are working as a dp now let's move on switch two so spanning tree and uh, on switch to i think i have so what is happening i've, I've removed it now right and also i'm going to remove it from switch one as well to show this way everything is fine now 21 22 both of them are up you know switch to also both of them are up 21 and 22 both of them are up right okay now let it move into the forwarding state first then i will show you that okay they will be communicating with each other right i'll show you right you see they are communicating with each other without any problem right now let's do one thing let's move back on switch two and let's try to <coughs> let's try to perform this spectacle now so how will it be possible for switch two to do not receive bpd on this on, on this rp if we enable bpd filter on dp is not it if you filter i mean sorry if you, if you configure bpd filter at the end of dp it means dp will stop to generate bpd messages right even if we enable it on uh, here it will not receive BPD. yeah but it will i mean like it will become then yeah you can do whatever you want right so we can move on switch one and on interface fa1 by 0 by 1 i can say spanning, spanning tree BPD card BPD. is sorry bpdu right once you will configure this command here let me show you debug spanning tree events so spanning tree you will see 21 after 20 seconds. yeah after 20 seconds right it will lost its rp state and still there is no problem see related to communication fine 
22 has moved into listening list state but the thing is there is no problem related to communication because still port is there right port have not gone down port is still there so it was funny too. but it have become now dp so both ends now have become dp here it is dp if you move on switch one then also you will find that it is working as a dp let me show you 21 so both ends are working as a dp now and now you see that all of them wow have become into the forwarding state right and flapping have also occurred and if flapping is there we cannot even accept see i can't do anything now i can't do anything so there is a loop bracing loop now to so prevent 21 become dp yeah because you enabled the dpd filter on 21 of switch yeah. so the uh, switch one will not send any bpd and also if, if switch 2 is um, is sending because now switch 2 will also send bpd towards switch 1 no, switch 1 is not going to process them so this uh, become uh, boot, uh, both ends of this segment have become now dp mm -hmm. tell me and what can you show me the diagram show switch 1 and switch to 21 22 21 22 it was root base yeah. I, have, I have enabled filter here yes so it will not send this so it is here. BTP it is also DP this is DP and this is what RP so the 22 remains RP of course okay only that mm -hmm. from blocking to RP it yeah, from blocking yeah, 20 to move from blocking to RP because this 21 lost its RP step yeah, exactly. because it didn't receive any BPD coming from switch 1 within 20 seconds, which is the maxis time or off. So, it will uh, the 22 will start receiving BPD. Of course, it is still receiving because I enabled filter here only on 21. Yeah, okay. so on 22, it will still it will keep on to receive bpdu that's that's why it will remain as rp and because it is receiving bpdu so it will think that okay i, I should send a copy of those bpd out from 21 that is why it have become dp but switch one is not processing that yeah due to bpd filter so there is a loop now right to solve this problem now what will i do i will again move back on switch one partial command by 0 by 21 and again i will remove this command to remove it i cannot negate it i have to say <coughs> so, or you can put it in the error missing uh, movement consistent. I will, no, 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 we will not do that actually. Wait, right? So, I have removed this feature from this interface now, right? So, again, it will start to generate BPD out from this interface, and again, you will see that 22 have moved back into the blocking state, and it is again root, and now there is no loop, and now you see that it have because I stopped ping, mm -hmm. so there will not be any problem. Nothing. Then after, what will I do? Let me do one thing. Let's start continuous ping, right? And let's move back again on switch two. And this time, I'll I will enable loop card here at the end of switch two, right? Because both interfaces, 21 and 22, are working as a no DP. So interface range fast Ethernet one by zero by 21 to 22, and, up, and then I will say spanning to card is what. Fine. So spanning tree interface fast Ethernet 1 by 0 by 21 and then set it here. It will show you that loop guard has been enabled on it. So spanning tree, no problem at all. Debug spanning tree events. You understand? And this time let me move back again on switch one and let me say enable. No problem. Till next 20 seconds, there will not be any problem. For next 20 seconds right and no problem related to communication as well see it is communicating perfectly see it's not it so there is no problem after 20 seconds now see this time it has blocked this 21 actually and 22 will take some time and you see there is no it is dropping it right there is no loop because if there is loop then it will not show you any any output here but this time it is showing you output that it is getting dropped 
because uh, in case of direct link failure of course it will take at least 30 seconds fine so after dropping 15 icmp packets it will move into the forwarding state let me show you it's about to 15 now and it will start to communicate with that see no problem there is no loop now because this switch to how put this 21 into loop in consistent state now where we will not receive if you it will put that as exactly ah uh, yeah and that is why i said that you will never enable it on dp because dp ideally dp will never receive vpdus right till there is no problem and if there is change in topology then of course dp can also receive some vpdus is not it yeah. okay, so I enable it on both interfaces. Okay. I taught I taught you that you will enable this feature on non-DP non and uh, either it is RP or blocking port comes under non-DP only. So this is the uses of loop card. Next is now BPD guard and BPDU filter. Fine. So let me do one thing once and one more thing. Once you will solve this problem, let's say you said again disabled here on this interface itself then again it will start to receive this bpd over here and 22 will move back again in blocking state and 21 will move into the listening state and again it, the convergence time would be 30 seconds you know why because BP, uh, uplink fast is not enabled so if uplink fast is not enabled then again your convergence time will be 30 seconds sorry uh, yeah of course 30 seconds so it have moved now into the learning state and again it will stay there for 15 seconds and then after 15 seconds it will move into next state which is forwarding state see is there any problem now show is panic 21 has moved into normal state now fine so this is the uses of loop guard next is like bpd guard and bpd filter and i have i hope that all of you really understand this bpd guard and i don't require to explain the uses of bpd guard and bpd filter right yeah. i have already explained you uses of bpd filter right yeah. even we have also proved it just one quick question that mm -hmm. if we enable there is one command called uh, spanning tree bpdu guard filter spanning tree bpdu guard uh, filter enabled and then there is command called spanning tree bpdu guard port fast yeah i'm coming on that see spanning tree port fast default enabled then spanning tree port fast bpdu guard or filter default then you can also say spanning tree port fast bpdu guard default so it, what does that mean this it means that wherever port fast will get enabled bpd guard and bpd filter will also get enabled and you know very well that port fast feature will get enabled only on access ports so this is the meaning of this command right and you can confirm that whether these features are enabled or disabled by using this command so spanning tree is what something check it out right Finally, you are having UDLD now, Unidirectional Link Detection. And UDLD basically, it is a Cisco proprietary protocol. The second thing, UDLD, uh, they developed this UDLD for fiber optical connections only. Because in fiber optical, you have one RX, another one is for TX, different connections, but which makes one single port. But even in TX, uh, in a Normal Ethernet cable, there are four. Yeah, but the thing is, if two will be for mm -hmm. TX and the other two will be for mm -hmm. either mm -hmm. one to one. But are inserting on a single switch port, right? And one more thing, if any single wire goes down, entire link will go down in case of Ethernet automatically, okay. right? But does not happen in case of fiber optical. Okay. So, in case if you are using fiber optical, like here, there are two switches switch one you understand and this is what switch two this is for rx here so it is going to here i mean at the end of switch it will be tx here if it is rx then here it will be tx and it is a single port right it's like gig zero by zero by one and here it is gig zero by zero by one here also right so if you are having this type of fiber optical cable available in between these two switches now what if let's say everything is everything goes fine so you are having some lane users behind switch one and some lane users behind switch two as well let's say that this tx have become faulty now 
will it be really possible for switch 1 to transmit data to in the direction of switch 2 but still you can see that switch 2, switch 2 can transmit data in the direction of switch 1 so let's say let's assume that it was root place d2 mac address a and b c just try to understand now right you see mm -hmm. here it is rx this is what tx here it is tx sorry it will be rx you understand and here it is what tx now stp has put it into the blocking state right and this is what dp this is what dp this is what rp and this is what in blocking state fine now the thing is this time this not this port actually this tx at the end of switch 2 become faulty are you getting my point even you have enabled loop card let's say you have enabled loop card right are you getting my point no i get i lost it actually how this is one cable this, this is one connection another connection there are two connections five optical connection between these two switches right in one connection you are having rxtx yeah. another connection also you are having rxtx now switch one was root base that is why both con bo both interfaces will become okay. dp here that's why i have configured here dp and this is also what dp here it have become let's say rp and this is in blocking state right okay any problem no. now at the end of switch two there is a problem in tx okay. so it will keep on to receive bpd on rp yeah because this is fine there is no problem on rx this is rx you understand this is rx so on receiving and on receiving via there is no problem so it will keep on to receive bpd so it will remain as rp but still the lane users cannot communicate to each other however you are having alternate port but again stp will not be able to utilize this alternate port this time because the tx link is exactly so this time ST, ST, for stp even after enabling loop guard everything root guard it will not be possible for stp to find out this this type of problem yeah. so within the wire it will not be possible I mean, but if, if if this rx if this tx goes down then of course it can identify it hey if this tx goes down yeah. here then it can identify because it will stop to receive vpd yeah. use right yeah so conditions are different i got a point yes. conditions are different if this tx goes down then of course stp can identify this failure yeah. but this time because this tx has, has not gone down right this tx is having problems so when users won't be able to communicate with each other and you won't be able to find out the problem for that purpose for this type of pro i mean to identify to uh, rectify these types of problems in your network we are having udld unidirectional link detection udld have mainly two types of messages udld request and udld response UDLD can be configured in two modes only. One is normal mode, another one is aggressive mode. In normal mode, uh, your UDLD message interval would be 7 seconds. In aggressive mode, it will be 15 seconds. In normal mode, if it if it, if it it uh, uh, detects any unidirectional link, if UDLD detects any unidirectional, because this link have become now unidirectional, now it is not bidirectional, right? And if you are, if you are like, fiber optical is already unidirectional then of course there will not be any uses of this udld the uses of udld will be in that case only when you are having your uh, your bidirectional port bidirectional fiber optical port right <coughs> so now to detect this i mean let's say that you are using udld normal mode right so in udld normal mode if udld detects any UD unidirectional link then it will simply generate a log masses won't perform anything else will not perform anything else except generating a log message but if you are using udld in aggressive mode you understand what i mean to say if you implement udld in aggressive mode and then after if udld detects any unidirectional link then after first of all it will try to reset it by itself and even after resetting the interface if it is still error unidirectional error. then after it will put that port into error disabled state so this is these are the main differences in between udld normal mode and the aggressive mode so you said uh, 7 and 515 seconds yeah 7 seconds in uh, normal. normal mode and in aggressive mode it will be 15 seconds so this what will be this message like hello udld something? request yeah hello is known as udld request okay. 
and of course neighbor switch has to give us how, how to respond with you read the response like a keep alive. yeah of course keep alive something like keep alive so that it will it will uh, be able to detect uh, your links so to detect your links your dld will get your dld will keep on to generate your dld request messages and of course uh, in the response of request it will give reply but right for seven seconds yeah in normal is in normal mode right no, no, but for those seven seconds the users will not be able to of course of course but you have to manage hmm. within that time because if you if you configure everything like within one second or two seconds again there will be too much extra overhead on your network right yeah. like if UDLD is generating UDLD request messages in every one second, it means there will be too much overhead on your network, right? So generally, I mean, you can also change it. It's up to you. So do we generally enable UDLD? Of course. In case of fiber optic, you will always but find in this. Case of Ethernet. No, 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 not in case of Ethernet. In case of Ethernet, LoopGuard is more than enough. But if you are having UDLD, this fiber optic, then do not enable LoopGuard. That's a, that's fine. But do not forget to enable. <laughs> UDLD. So to enable UDLD again, like you understand very well that what are the I mean, what are the commands necessary to configure UDLD? Like to enable UDLD is very simple. UDLD enable for normal mode. But to enable aggressive mode UDLD aggressive. And then after enabling globally, then you have to move on in under interfaces like interface range fast Ethernet 1 by 0 by 21 to 22. Then you have to say UDLD port and then aggressive to enable aggressive mode, right? Then after you can move on switch to like UDLD is what aggressive then interface range fast Ethernet 1 by 0 by 21 to 22 then you have to say UDLD port is what aggressive then you can move I mean you can see I mean you can run this command show UDLD interface fast Ethernet 1 by 0 by 21 and then what enter Message interval is what? 15 seconds. Yeah, it is showing me message interval is 7 seconds. Any, any debugs to see these methods? No. <sighs> Timeout interval is what? 5 seconds. It means if it have transmitted UDLD request, it must receive the UDLD response within 5 seconds. Aggressive mode, this time its mode is what? The state is what? Bidirection. It is not unidirection, right? Yeah. In it this way, it's possible to have some unidirectional like like changing wire or I mean, no, yeah, in Ethernet it is not. In Ethernet it is not. Like, and on switch two, one more thing. On switch two, I mean, not only on switch two, on switches you can also configure auto recovery from error disabled state. Yeah. When you configure like error disabled, error disabled recovery cause under cause you can also find this UDLD. Yeah. It means it is true that in aggressive mode, UDLD will put your interface into a disabled state, right? So in this way, you can configure all these things. Fine. Then after it, after talking about all these security features of STP, let's talk about RSTP now. Yeah. yeah. Let me explain it, right? So that tomorrow we can perform the practicals of RSTP. Fine. So in RSTP, the very first difference, like here in STP, you can still see that even after enabling port fast feature, uplink fast, backbone fast, the convergence time was still 30 seconds, right? In some cases, it was too much actually for production networks. So finally, uh, like IEEE launched RSTP, rapid spanning trick protocol, right? Rapid spanning trick protocol. And the first difference in between STP and RSTP is port states. Like here in RSTP, you are having like discarding, block, learning, and finally forwarding. Only three states are there. So listening and listening, blocking, blocking and learn, listening, blocking and disabled. First three states. I mean, they have combined first three. Yes. In discarding state. Discarding, okay. Disabled is nothing. Nothing. So basically, they have combined all those states, first three states, into this discarding state, right? And remember, if you talk about the RSTP, it is seriously too fast. It is, is fast. Is, it has fast convergence as compared yeah, to. Maximum of two seconds, right? Yeah. 
In case of RST, maximum convergence time will be two seconds. Maximum two seconds. But, but here in RSTP, the most important thing is it's not like to understand the port states and all. By looking at the port state, you can think okay, it is learning, it is having only learning state, it means uh, it will take 15 seconds only, right? It's not like that. It is not like that. In some cases, it will not take like 15 seconds, but in some cases, it will also take more than 15 seconds as well, like 30 seconds. So we have to understand all those situations in which it can it will not take 15 seconds like it will take maximum one second or two seconds right maximum two seconds and we have to understand all those situations as well in which it can take more around 30 seconds as well remember port fast feature is not the default feature of rstp in some books they have written that port fast is also like built-in feature of rst but it is not something like that. i mean it is not like that port fast was never part of i mean was never built-in feature of rstp BPD guard, sorry, backbone fast and uplink fast. We cannot say that these are the built-in feature, but RSTP have built-in capabilities so that we will not require to enable uplink fast here and backbone fast, right? Now the big question is that how does it really work? To understand it's working, we have to understand it's like in RSTP we are having some terminologies you understand like first of all proposal there is a terminology in RSTP which is known as proposal second is what second is what synchronization you understand the first thing is proposal Second is synchronization and third one is agreement. Third one was? Agreement. If you understand, if you understand the meaning by proposal, the meaning by synchronization and the meaning by agreement, it means you understand RSTP. Because RSTP, the functionality of RSTP is completely depending only on these three things proposal, synchronization, and agreement. So, now if you talk about the proposal, in short, in brief, I will let you know that proposal is like whenever a switch will come up, it will generate proposal messages. And in proposal messages, actually, it will give its own BPDU messages. I mean, during proposal switches will exchange their bpd messages fine in synchronization if let's say for an example let mm, proposal is done now right after proposal they will perform synchronization and uh, in synchronization actually like switches will put their trunk ports into discarding state to prevent their switch network from possible bridging loops right and finally switch will generate an agreement that okay i'm rp after election of rp right after electing rp then it will generate an agreement message towards its upstream right it towards its upstream breeze that okay uh i'm rp and you must be dp once switch will generate agreement message out from its switch port and a switch which receives agreement on its switch port they will directly put those interfaces directly into forwarding state without doing wait without putting your interfaces into learning or like discarding state i'll let you know all these things right because this is quite interesting and now the big question is that how will it be possible because in case of uplink fast i told you that how switches updates their map table right but here in rstp we have to understand it that how switches really uh, i mean how, how switches updates their map table because here we are not having a plane fast exactly right so there must be some method there must be some methodology by which switches will update their map table immediately because in rstp if your primary root port goes down then immediately within milliseconds your secondary root port will come yeah. so of course there must be some mechanism by which switches uh, will update their map table immediately fine so I'll be discussing all these things with you tomorrow.
but do one thing prepare yourself i mean like you can read something about proposal message synchronization and of course this agreement message as well fine so now we'll see you tomorrow